Released on iOS on January 14, 2016 worldwide and set to be released in the near future for Android, PC and Wii U by Natsume and Tabot Incorporated, we have Harvest Moon Seeds of Memories. After the lukewarm reception of Harvest Moon The Lost Valley, the review you can catch here, Natsume decided to go back to Harvest Moon's roots and have a retro style similar to earlier games in the series. In this installment, your self-insert farmer moves into the farm east of Chestnut Town. For one reason or another, the inhabitants of the town can't seem to recall the existence of the farm, and it's up to you to restore the farm and help the folks in town remember by befriending them and perhaps even romancing some of them. But did Natsume learn from the mistakes of the Lost Valley? Is going back to Harvest Moon's roots the right way to go? Find out in... The Good When Natsume said they were going back to its roots, they certainly weren't kidding. The game has returned to a 2D style of gameplay, very much like the original game on the Super Nintendo, and the Game Boy and Game Boy Advance games, but with some of the features of newer games such as displaying the stamina bar, a feature not present in the earlier games. Some of the features from the earlier games included characters being in a set place at certain times of the day, and requiring you to leave the area in order for them to move to their next scheduled place. Crops are still grown individually, although thankfully they don't take up a 3x3 area where you couldn't access the crop in the middle like in the earlier games. Fruit trees are back, and foraging, mining and fishing are available as activities as well. The blend between old and new features I felt worked quite well for it. There's a bit more strategy to growing crops to make money or give us gifts and seeds of memory than in previous games. An interesting and most unusual change you'll come across is that crops can now grow during any season, and traditional crops which regrew, such as corn and tomatoes, no longer have that ability. Crops do however have a preferred season where they can become great crops, or even mutate in order to sell for more money. Due to crops being available to grow all year round, you also don't need to worry about them wilting when the seasons change. On top of that you don't have freshness to worry about so you can now be that one guy or girl who enjoys giving folks produce that you've been keeping in your bag for half a year. Like in The Lost Valley, I also like the personalities of the characters in game. While all of them have come from The Lost Valley, including its DLC Bachelor and Bachelorette, some jobs have been changed but the general personality of the characters remain the same. For example, Catherine, who more or less wandered around The Lost Valley, now works as a waitress for Luke's bar in Seeds of Memories. Despite that, her attitude is still somewhat prickly. Emily, the super duper waitress, still wants to make people happy with her food and become a great chef like her mother. And April still shares a love of flowers, as well as a shy and introverted personality. Also in addition from the Lost Valley, the number of love interests have increased from 6, 8 with DLC, to 10, 5 for each gender, with Gareth the Magician and Tabitha the Witch added to the roster. Despite the cast being a cut and paste from the Lost Valley, and let's face it, this isn't the first Harvest Moon game to do this, the more fleshed out personalities, as well as a town for the player to actually visit and see the townsfolk almost any time, is a significant step up from the Lost Valley. However, once you go up, there's only one direction to go from there, which brings us down to... The Bad. As with The Lost Valley, the flow of time and Seeds of Memories is still faster than other games in the franchise, with the average day taking me anywhere from between 20 seconds to 15 minutes, or if I'm mining, a couple of hours. Animals finishing their food at the nearest hour is still a thing, and if it happens to be 8.01am when they reach the food, despite you putting it there at 7.30, you gotta wait until 9 to receive their produce, with the exception of chickens. Thankfully time does stop while you're in the mine or inside any buildings or special places with the exception of your barns, so you can take time doing what you need to do, which isn't very much as I normally enter a building to give gifts or talk to the townsfolk. I also found the game was far too easy, especially when it came to making money. For certain tasks you complete or memories you unlock, you receive a reward usually in the form of crops, food or materials. Some of the food you obtain can easily carry you to the lower parts of the mine, where you can essentially live off the money you make from all the ore you mine, refine and sell. I was easily able to afford the final house upgrade upon my second big trip to the mine, while living off rewards for completing memories, and still have far too much money left over to live off. High quality crops or food can also be used to give you a major advantage in the cooking contest, as they can be used as ingredients in some of the more complicated dishes. Unfortunately, this does remove a lot of the challenge in the game, which is a little disappointing. However, from a more positive view, it does encourage the player to take care of their farm, as well as befriend the townsfolk by offering rewards as an incentive. 
The game suffers from a lack of festivals as each season, with the exception of winter, has one unique festival. The cooking and fishing contests alternate with cooking being in spring and fall, while fishing is in summer and winter. Gone are the days of animal and crop contests since you're the only farmer in the immediate area, or even travelling merchants who might sell you things you normally can't get in town. This also ties into another issue I had, which was that the game had a lack of content outside of the basic Harvest Moon formula. While the Lost Valley kept me occupied by having me try to restore the seasons with tasks such as reaching the underworld, and reuniting two certain characters as a catalyst to beating the game, I found that there was very little I could do with my crops but sell them, gift them or eat them. While you can cook in the game, I found that most of my crops weren't even ingredients required for the recipes I had purchased, and the only major advantage my higher quality crops gave me was a higher shipping price or recovering more stamina. I wasn't particularly fond of the art direction used, as I felt all they really did was take the models from the Lost Valley and used only basic poses as sprites for the game. A feature I've noticed the game advertise is befriending and keeping a bobcat as a pet, which during my playthrough so far has provided me with no major benefits, but a couple of rewards and another mouth to feed. While I do like and applaud the game for returning to its roots, I felt that they've sort of played it too safe, and that if you were really wanting to capture the feel of one of the older games, Friends of Mineral Town would have been the best example to follow. Returning to 16-bit sprites, like the Super Nintendo game, would have also been a welcome change, but that could just be my sense of nostalgia saying that. To me, Seeds of Memories on iOS sort of feels a little bit rushed, and not to be a bit rude, a little half assed in some places. Granted, I will look into the Wii U and PC versions if there are revisions made to the game, as I'm assuming at this point the Android version will be identical to the iOS one. Admittedly, this is probably just me, but I really wasn't a huge fan of the controls. Harvest Moon has used touch controls for a game in the past, and I really wasn't keen on it. It is a little disappointing that there wasn't any alternative control schemes for a controller, or even availability for the new Apple TV, as I felt the game had potential for both of these things. With that, I believe I've covered all the things I need to go through with the bad, so all that's left is for me to give... The Opinion I think with Harvest Moon Seeds of Memories, Natsume has taken a step in the right direction. It may not be a huge step in the right direction, but a step nonetheless. Despite all the negative things I was just talking about, they did address some of the concerns raised with the release of The Lost Valley, and I appreciate them for that. But I still think they've got quite a way to go to give Marvelous' Story of Seasons a run for its money. The addictive formula that got me into Harvest Moon is still there, although not as strong as other games in the series. The game was very well priced, and I definitely got my money's worth from playing it. There were some bugs I did encounter in the game, like the odd time music didn't loop correctly, as well as missing dialogue, but it wasn't anything to make a huge song and dance about. If you like the original game and the Game Boy slash Game Boy Advance games, then I think you'll like this game. It's certainly better than Island of Happiness in my book. At the end of the day, like what I said with The Lost Valley, give this game a go. It's not the game I would recommend to people entering the series, but it is a game that at least deserves a chance and being available on iOS, as well as a number of devices in near future, does make this game appeal to a much wider audience. So with that, it's time for my rating. I would give Harvest Moon Seeds of Memory The Missing Turnip again out of 10. Seriously, turnips have always been a staple of the basic spring crop in the games. It would be nice to add it back in again so I could upgrade the rating too, while at least the game has turnips out of 10. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next Infinite Backlog Review.